It's Rick. It is July the 8th, 2019. If you'd like to communicate with me by email, I do not speak on the phone or text, just email. My email is rick, R-I-C-K, 0327 at me.com. You're emailing me because you're interested in receiving my paperwork in exchange for a gift. I do child support. My paperwork is for child support only. Okay, I'm not into this uh, right to travel stuff or traffic court. Okay, um, you know, if you were arrested and they searched your car illegally and found drugs or found whatever, okay, I just do child support. I don't do custody issues, okay, uh, just child support. Okay, my email will be in the description box. Okay, so I, you know, I haven't made a video, you know, uh, on the computer in a while. I've been very busy. If you can tell by the different background of you, if you noticed, I, I moved. I live in a different location. I have a home to live in now. So I've been very busy with that. I haven't had time to get on the computer and to do research and to put together a few slides. I've been really busy and I apologize about that, but you know, I, this is, uh, you know, I volunteer my time. Okay. This, I'm not a business. I don't have a website. Okay. I just somebody that, that was a victim of child support. Like you guys did a lot of studying. Went to court many, many times, documented many things. I proved many things, helped several people uh, with my paperwork. Okay, I don't count, but I've helped a lot of people. Okay, if you, uh, if you any nonsense about me out, at, out there, you know, some asshole calling me a fraud, they're all trolls. That's all they are, not the patrols. No, making fun of my New York accent. I say yous and thems, you know, some stupid troll comment. It's just trolls trying to steer you away from me. That's really what it's all about. Okay? My paperwork for uh, a very reasonable gift gives you a chance. Now, the rest is up to you, though. Okay? Uh, the gift is for the paperwork. I am not holding your hand. Okay, I have a life to live. This stuff is not easy. It's up to you. You're you're an adult. Okay. Sadly, you know you got snagged. I don't know. I don't know the reasons why. I don't ask. I I, I never ask if anybody. Uh, I, I don't even use that term. Dead be dead. It's nothing but a, a marketing plan for the state to uh, cause everybody to believe that the child support agency is helping children when they're not. There are court cases out there that prove that the money does not go to children or families. It's nothing but misdirection. It's, it's welfare recoupment. That's all it is. And what they're doing is they're stealing the money out of the Social Security Okay, and sending it to the state. And the state does whatever it wants with that money. They don't use it to replenish the, the, the treasury uh, for the monies paid out for public assistance. No, they use it for roads and whatever they want to fill in their budgets, to, to, to hire more employees, to give out more bonuses. That's what this is all about. It's federal money. It's a scam. Nothing but a scam. But you have to go in there and you have to fight. It's that simple. It's a fact that you have inalienable rights. It is a fact. Some fake judge called a judge surrogate under the title support magistrate, magistrate, associate judge, 
friend of the court, uh, attor uh, assistant attorney general. They're all fake judges, all of them. And they all stare you down. And they played it the, the role of a judge. And it's up to you to stand up straight, look them in the eye, and tell them it is a fact. That the Constitution for the United States and your state constitution. I've added a uh, new verbiage to my paperwork two or three months ago because I, I, I've been studying and I even made myself one about state citizen rights. Do you, that, that's the reason why we're called the United States. States were autonomous before we became the United States. So every state has their own constitution, they have their own laws. So when you were born in your state, you are automatically a state citizen. You have to be made a federal citizen. A federal citizen is a United States citizen within the 10 by 10 uh, borders, miles within Washington, D.C. And what happens is, is usually your parents or parent, in some cases, they fill out some papers and they check off a uh, United States citizen and you become a United States citizen. Also, other things I'm not going to get into. Okay, now, if somebody did that for you when you were a baby, were you making a conscious, uh, a, a knowing choice, a conscious choice? No, but you are an adult now. And you can assert your state sovereign rights. It's a fact. There are case laws that state that you are, you can be a state citizen and not be a United States citizen. Because think about it, a United States citizen is within the District of Columbia. Are you in the District of Columbia right now? Maybe some of you are, but the majority of us are not. Okay, so that, therefore you are a state citizen and you have state citizen rights. And I forget, like certain states, you they have uh, terms like um, in California, you call a Californian. And in Virginia, you might be called a Virginian. They, and it's actually, uh, it, it, it's actually public knowledge if you look it up and find it. But it is a fact that you have these rights. It's, it's all over the internet. It's right in the state constitution. You have a right to a trial by jury. It's a fact. Here's another fact. You're presumed innocent until proven guilty. Innocent until proven guilty. Now, what they have you doing, they have you guilty until proven, and forget about it, even, they don't even let you prove yourself innocent. You're just proven guilty because uh, a woman or a man that you had a child with applied for Social Security, I mean, excuse me, for uh, public assistance. And then when they applied for public assistance, they're like, oh, where's the, uh, the father? Where's the mother? Oh, I don't know, whatever. Well, and then they, 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 they give the name, they give as much information as they have, and then they find you. They start a, a peti they sign a petition with no evidence. And that's what we're going to be talking about in this video real fast. We're going to start asking the clerk of the court for the in, for the evidence, discovery of evidence that gave that clerk of the court probable cause to issue a notice to appear, a summons, subpoena. We're going to call it notice to of appear, notice to appear. There has to be probable cause for everything. Okay, the thing that's going on with President Trump right now is basically what we're talking about today. They keep saying that the Russians did this, the Russians did that. It's all baloney. 
It was started. It was started on a lie. Now, if something started without any evidence, everything that follows afterwards is is false. Okay. So now, if the petitioner or plaintiff, same thing, goes to court, goes to uh, an employee in the clerk's office, and, and they start a case, they're supposed to provide evidence. He's not paying child support. She's not paying child support. Okay, what evidence do you have? That's what they're supposed to ask. But because it's a, a business, they never ask. But you're going to ask. You're going to send a communication to the clerk of the court asking for evidence of probable cause. Okay? And that's what we're going to do. All right, so before we start, somebody's calling me a genius again. Okay, Afi. Just wanted to let you know the outcome of the filings from February 5th, 2009. Well, the case got dismissed without prejudice because I filed five of the affidavits in the paperwork I received from you. I did my part by studying the paperwork and adding a few things here and there I felt would help my case. He's not the first one to do this, nor the last. My paperwork provides a very sound foundation for you. Just be careful what you add. There's a lot of false information out there. Okay? A lot of false information out there. Just be careful. But he knows what he's doing. And again, this is another guy who knew his stuff. I've always said whenever I post, uh, you know, proof of somebody getting off child support with my paperwork, there's always one common denominator. They knew their rights, and they went in there and they fought because they knew their rights. Okay? And that's what he did. So he said, I added a few things. I watched every one of your videos every morning after work and sometimes throughout the day. I even watched videos from Amin and Osiris. See, many times my name and Amin and Osiris is mentioned together. That's not a coincidence. It's also the same knuckleheads that are calling me a fraud, call him a fraud. Okay? Trolls. That's all they are, the trolls. I did my own research and found case laws and statutes that you provided in your videos. I even found a Title IV-D contract online with the federal child support manual that i cross-referenced everything with excellent good work i'm here to tell anyone that your paperwork is real and all you have to do is study study it and know the information while you're in the courtroom you can see the fear in their face this happens let me tell you something this is very true what he's saying right here this is why they pull all this trickery that's why people are having a hard time filing the paperwork because my paperwork is spot on these people do not want to address my paperwork in court. They'd rather pull these little tricks by having the clerk bring the paperwork to them and then say, no, 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 tell them it's, it's not the right format. It's, tell them, no, that, that you got to go a different court. They pull all kinds of trickery, come back, and hopefully the, the, you know, the man or the woman with my paperwork leaves. That's what they're hoping for because my paperwork is spot on. And that's what he's saying right here. When they learn that you are on to their little scam, now I am free from support orders. I just have to attack the back pay case. That's hard. I'll be done. Congratulations. God bless you and my friend. Peace and blessings. Thank you. All right. This is what he filed. Okay. Just to prove that it's true. Okay. Also... Well, your paperwork is spot on, Rick. I want They want to harass you because your paperwork is exposing this horrible corruption called child support. Thank you for being strong. Thank you, David Richardson. Okay? I get usually the same response from my paperwork. People are shocked at what they get. Some people get intimidated because I provide a lot of paperwork because there's a lot of scenarios. Okay? All you got to do is take a deep breath and read the paperwork. And if it... If it applies to your case use, and also I describe what each paperwork is for in the instructions, and then it's up to you to apply it. Okay? 
All right, so I just uh, said to you that sending communication to the clerk of the court for discovery proving the court had probable cause to send a notice to appear. If they didn't have probable cause, meaning they don't have evidence, they should have never sent out uh, a summons, subpoena, notice to appear. Okay? <clears throat> you could challenge your appearance by demanding from the clerk of the court evidence introduced by the petitioner giving the clerk of the court probable cause to send the notice to appear. No probable cause, then you do not have to appear. Okay, cooperative arrangements on the 42 U.S.C. section 654, subsection 7, 45 CFR 302.34 and 303.107 require clerk of the court to forward any evidence to the prosecutor. The, and the prosecutor is usually the 4D agency. Okay, and everybody in the court, under this agreement, they become contractors, okay? So, um, this is coming from 45 CFR 302.34. That's what this, this is here, these uh, 1 through 3. The state plan shall provide that the state will enter into agreements which are reflected in a record for cooperative arrangements under 303.107, which uh, I'll, I have it uh, showing it's uh, <clears throat> appropriate courts, law enforcement officials, such as district attorneys, attorneys general, and similar public attorneys and prosecutors. Public attorneys, these are the, the, um, the, the, the uh, judge surrogates. Attorney generals in Texas, district attorneys in other areas, prosecutors. See, they're all contracted. And it's also under this that I suspect, I've said it in my older videos, I suspect that when you hire an attorney, that they never help you. They're always helping you into the grave. What they're doing is they're helping you to pay child support through the system. And then what they do is I believe that they because of this arrangement here, they fill out a, a, a contract with the, uh, the federal agency and they get reimbursed. So they double dip. They're getting the money from you, then they get the money from the federal government. Right here. Cooperative agreement, purchase of services and agreement. I'm not going to get into all this right now. It's a lot of information. Okay. I'm going to go, scroll real slowly. If you want to stop and read it, go right ahead. But this is why I have reason to believe this is where the attorneys are double dipping. Because I don't know of anybody that's hired an attorney and had a positive outcome, myself included. I had to help myself. I fired three attorneys, spent over $15,000. The last attorney I had, I found out she was purposely sending the paperwork to the wrong address. And it turned out that she was arrested a couple of years later for stealing the escrow money from one of her clients. So this shows you the type of people we're dealing with. Okay. All right. Done there. Such arrangements shall contain provisions for providing courts and law enforcement officials with pertinent information needed in locating non-custodial parents. This is all information. You know who provides information? The petitioner. So this is what I'm saying to you, that the clerk of the court is supposed to forward the information to the prosecutor, Title IV, the agency. Well, you're going to want, you want to, uh, you want to see this information. You also want to see what information the petitioner uh, introduced proving that you didn't pay child support. Again, they, they, they use the presumption that applying for uh, you know, public assistance is a reason. That's not a reason. That, that doesn't mean you haven't been paying support. There are many women out there that get child support separate and they collect public uh, assistance. Okay, they should also provide for assistance at Title IV, the agency, in carrying out the program and may relate with other matters of common concern. Under matters of common concern, 
This is this is what I think is funny right here. Such arrangements may include provisions for the investigation and prosecution of fraud directly related to paternity and child support, spousal support. They never do any of this. It's hilarious. This is this is because they put stuff on paper to make it look like what they're doing is lawful. They never do that. So let's say you, I, I mean, people come to me, hey, Rick, I have evidence that, uh, you know, baby mother, you know, the father that are committing, they don't, if you forwarded this, if I tried this myself, I, I forwarded information proving my ex-wife, you know, was lying in court, and they didn't care, because that's grounds for fraud. Okay, if the federal government is providing federal money based on a lie, that's called fraud. But then the state won't get their federal money. You understand? Hilarious. All right. Motion for discovery sent to the clerk of the court. Why file a motion for discovery? Probable cause to send summons to appear. You, no evidence, no probable cause. No probable cause, no personal jurisdiction. Exculpatory evidence. Exculpatory evidence is evidence held by the prosecution that's favorable to you. It's called the Brady Rule. Now, you know what evidence of exculpatory evidence favorable to you is? No evidence. So now, if you demand discovery of probable cause and the clerk of the court can't provide any evidence. That's exculpatory evidence that is favorable to you, that they have no evidence against you. Now, if the clerk of the court was honest, they would turn the petitioner away and say, I cannot accept your petition. That's what they're supposed to do. Do you understand? They never do it. Okay, here's another thing. They they need evidence to prove that, uh, well, you're, you're filing a motion for discovery to prove that there is no evidence, right? To prove there is no evidence of an injured party. Evidence that you caused an injury. No injured party, no personal jurisdiction. Right, this is the Brady Rule. What is exculpatory evidence? The Brady Rule. Named for Brady v. Maryland, Supreme Court, 1963, requires prosecutors, and, and in child support cases, that is the title for the agency, to disclose materially exculpatory evidence in the government's possession to the defense. Brady material or evidence the prosecutor is required to disclose under this rule includes any evidence favorable to the accused. Evidence that goes towards negating the defendant's guilt. No evidence against you goes towards negating your guilt. If the, if the petitioner provided no evidence, why are they tracking you down? Why are they garnishing your pay? You understand? So, I thought that was important to cover that exculpatory evidence. If the prosecution does not disclose material exculpatory evidence and prejudice has ensued, the evidence will be suppressed. So, this is what, it, what I'm saying here is that. This is why you have to send a communication to the clerk of the court because if the clerk of the court re refuses to respond, you can use that communication to say that you demanded proof of evidence of probable cause and the clerk refused to respond. Then you can file an injunction that because, or you actually, you can file a dismissal. In another court, of course, it's very <laughs> to get a dismissal in, in one of these domestic courts is almost impossible, sadly. 
it's when you go to when you go to all the courts. <clears throat> okay, but again, it could be done. It could be done. The defendant bears the burden of proving that the undisclosed evidence was material. You see this? This means that you have to apply for it. Okay. And the defendant must show that there was reasonable probability that there would have been a different outcome of the trial. All right. What's what's the probability? Well, there's no evidence to show that you were not supporting your child. How about this? How about you doing that? And then you don't have to do this, by the way, because remember, you're presumed innocent. So this is why you got to be careful. But let's say that you could prove that you were supporting your child. You could do that. Provide the, uh, you know, proof of, you know, endorsed checks, cash checks. It's up to you, though. Motion for discovery is called theory evidence. All right. Here's another thing that's important. You're going to notify the prosecution that you're not an employee of the executive branch because remember I showed you guys, um, and you could do that by filing a notice of motion number four, one of uh, my, if you have my affidavits, notice to the court contesting Title IV, the support enforcement proceedings and support orders. By notifying the clerk of the court that you're not a government employee under the executive branch, they cannot presume that you are one and immediately garnish your income. We covered this in the past. Okay. Um, Executive Order 12953, signed by President Clinton, saying that all federal employees. The, what happened was the, he's saying that all federal employees, as model employees for the rest of the country, must support their children. So basically what he was doing, he was giving permission for the um, consent for garnishment under uh, 42 U.S.C. 659. Executive Order 120, actions required of all executive agencies to facilitate payment of child support under Section 101. Establishes executive branch and federal government through its civilian employees and uniformed service members, the military, uh, you know, Coast Guard, whatever, as a model employer in promoting and facilitating the establishment and enforcement of child support. Requires all federal agencies, including the Uniformed Service, to cooperate fully in efforts to establish paternity and child support orders and, and to enforce the collection of child and medical support in all situations. So what happened here, they took this and they applied it to everybody. So what they do is they use the presumption against you, and it's up to you to rebut the presumption. That's what you're doing by notifying the clerk of the the, of the court that you are not a federal employee. Okay. And I'm going to move on. Okay. Because we're at 28 minutes. All right. So under 12953, actions required of all executive agencies. This includes wage withholding. Within 60 days of the date of this order, every federal agency shall review its procedures for wage withholding under 42 U.S.C. 659 and implementing regulations to ensure that it is in full compliance with the requirements of that section and shall endeavor, to the extent feasible, to process wage withholding actions consistent with the requirements of 42 U.S.C. 666B. They often cite that as a reason. So if you'll say to the child support agency, well, where, 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 do, you, where do you get the right to, to, to garnish my check? And they'll say, well, under sir, ma'am, under 42 U.S.C. 666. That's where they get it from. Those wonderful people. Oh, I hate those people. All right, and that's it. All right, so uh, what you're going to do is you're going to communicate 
with the clerk of the court. You can send a letter demanding proof of probable cause, demanding discovery of evidence that the clerk of the court used or relied upon giving him or her the authority to issue a notice to appear. See, here's the thing. You're presumed innocent. You're presumed free. So just because some court tells you you have to appear doesn't mean you have to appear. You could communicate with the court and say, oh, excuse me, there must be some mistake. I'm supporting my child. Why, you know, what, what evidence did she or he give you, that liar? Well, well, if you can't give it to me, I'm not showing up. And then if you have me arrested, I'm going to present this paperwork to a court of competent jurisdiction and sue you. That's another thing. What we're doing is we're creating a paper trail. Okay? A paper trail that you, you have the right to see the evidence. You have a right for discovery of evidence. All right? And, and, and I didn't do it because... It usually takes 30 days. You got to give them 30 days, but you could file an interrogatory. Okay? Interrogatories are good weapons, but these lawyers, they all have these little tricks around it. They feign, uh, they don't understand what you're asking. I, I, don't, I don't understand question number three. You know, they're, they're, these lawyers, they're, they're trained in the dark arts of lying. That's all they are. They'd have all of us, the whole world, believe they're very intelligent, these lawyers. Where most of them are just professional liars. That's all they are. <clears throat> all right? <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. All right, so listen, I'm going to end the video. All right, again, my email address is rick, R-I-C-K, 0327, at me.com. All right, guys? Hope to hear from you, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.